So uh, this is the session about the configuration management uh, initiative 2.0 updates. Um, I'm Fabian Bircher. I'm a senior software engineer and I work at Nuvole. You can uh, follow us on Twitter um, and my Drupal.org username is uh, just my last name. I work for Nuvole and uh, Nuvole is a distributed team in Italy, Belgium and the Czech Republic. Um, we have a lot of uh, international organizations and institutions as our clients and uh, we use, um, like, we do fast deliveries usually, so several developers are working on the same site at the, at the same time and um, we, we have automated tests and we, we frequently deploy things. So we need uh, a workflow that is safe and um, this slide is uh, basically copy-paste since 10 years or more. I, I found out um, in, with discussion that this is actually my 10th DrupalCon and the first DrupalCon I uh, attended, my colleagues gave a session on the main stage about configuration management. So um, <laughs> it's kind of a tradition, so, so to say. Um, the brief uh, outline of the session, I, the brief introduction, uh, very brief history. I can talk about this topic for ages, so uh, come to me afterwards if you want to know uh, more about it. Um, then the CMI2 focus areas, um, the achievements we, we have now in, in 8.8, .8. um, the things that are still open for 8.8 .8 but need work and, and need your input, and then future plans uh, for realistically more Drupal 9 and, and beyond. Uh, finally, some best practices on how you can be ready for, for the future already today, um, even with previous uh, versions of, of Drupal, and, uh, and how you can get uh, involved. Um, so, I, most of you, or, or some of you, are probably aware that the, the CMI, the, the original Configuration Management Initiative, was before Drupal 8 was released. Uh, the CMI stopped when Drupal 8 was released, and its main target was to provide um, a declarative configuration workflow into Drupal core. And, and since 8.0, 8 we, we had that. Um, it, it was targeted to the like, most common use case, which is um, staging the same site between different environments. So, but all configuration is exported, all configuration is imported. And that was a, an important distinction and an important decision to, to specify exactly a limited amount of workflow um, so that it can be done. And, and it's, I agree that it's totally much better to have something that works than to have many plans and none of them actually are implemented. So they left um, everything basically to contrib to figure out and fill in the gaps for all of these things. And and contribute it. And uh, so now we, we have contrib solutions for, for some of these problems, and uh, they work quite well. The config split has um, one million downloads, for example. Um, and so we created the CMI2 to, to bring some of it to core. Uh, it, we have three different focus areas. Uh, all of them need a lot of help. The first one is, is the one that is probably um, least active, so to say, and that's documentation. So all the tools are basically as useful as the best documentation you have. And there's not that much documentation on both how to use it and also how to extend it and how to use the API. So we need better documentation for both of the 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 developers and, and also the end users because this is a, a feature that's meant for, for everybody. Um, then the, the focus area for which we have made the most progress so far is to en enhance environment specific configuration between different environments of the same site. So, so this is the, the development modules that you don't want to deploy to production for example. This is where the most mature contrib solutions are and, and we've, we've gathered the best like, ideas and, and made them uh, into core. And the third one um, is the one that I get most of the questions about uh, at these events. 
but uh, where there is no current uh, best practice, let's say. So, and that's the cross-site configuration. So when you have several sites that where you share configuration between them. Um, distributions, th th it has many names. Um, so shortly about the organization, how we work and how you can help out. Um, Alex Pott and me are the uh, initiative leads at the moment. Uh, we have a bi-weekly meeting at um, five in the evening uh, on the Slack. The, there's this config channel and we, we meet there. There's also a Drupal.org project page, CMI2, um, which is like the start to, to find the issues that are tagged for our initiatives and to, to find uh, thing more. So th this is the best place to, to join and to, to, to ask uh, config-related questions. Next, uh, achievements for 8.8. .8. So the highlight that probably the reason why you're all here. Um, Installing from existing configuration. This is not actually an 8.8 .8 achievement, but an 8.6 achievement. Uh, but it's still like one of the major and the first real uh, tangible result from our initiative. Um, you can define uh, the config sync directory in your settings PHP and, uh, or add it to your custom profile and then just run trash site install with the ex existing config flag, or of course, via the UI, um, there's, there will be an option like you can select from your install profiles, but then there's also used existing configuration. There's a small asterisk that I will get to at the end, or later. Um, then another important update, or an, an important update that affects everybody, like all of you, literally 100% of people who use configuration management, is that there is now only one configuration directory in your settings.php. And it's not no longer an array, and it's no longer the config directory's variable, global variable. And the reason for this is, um, it used to be an array because of an accident, or, or it was never meant to be an array. It, it, it was an array because of historical reasons, because of when the first CMI made their progress, and, and there was a time in very unstable alpha of Drupal core where there were more than one key. But since 8.0.0, there was only ever one key in this array, and me included, I came and was like, oh, this is an array, cool, that means more than one value, right? I mean, it's, that's what arrays do. And you think like, oh, how can I use this cool new feature until you find out that actually it hurts more than it should and there's no reason for that. So we, it's a developer experience improvement, but it means it limits you in the future because there's, you can come up with and Drush supports labels and all of these things, but uh, in an effort to consolidate and to make configuration management easier to understand and easier to teach. It's important to, to make sure that this actually, core only ever supported this one key and nobody stops you from adding anything else, but core only supports one and therefore core only has one setting. And it makes everything easier when you get uh, used to it, when you let go of this idea that there could be more, <laughs> um, th there are for sure circumstances and, and situations where more can make sense, but it's not the 90% use case. And so now we, we changed it, and it's uh, for most cases a single, like scriptable replacement of the old config directories to these new settings. Same place. Everything works the same way. But it doesn't mislead anymore. And that's, that's a, the big win. The big win is like the PR aspect, not how the code works, because it <laughs> works the same way. Um, next, uh, we have an export API. Um, we have configuration management, which is about exporting and importing configuration. Um, but until Drupal 8.8, .8, there was no API to export configuration. Um, <laughs> Sounds a bit silly, I know, but uh, it, 
it was never necessary because all the tools were just exporting from, from the same place, uh, from the active configuration store. And every, everybody did, did it this way. But the problem is there is no extension point with, um, that you can interact with. If, if you export directly from the active configuration, then you cannot extend this system. You cannot, you cannot say, oh, but now the, the active configuration store um, behaves differently when you use it normally or when you export from it. It's, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we added another config storage. Um, so the replacement for it is really simple. You just, instead of using config storage, you use config storage.export. And you, it's the same code from there on. Um, and this allowed us to then do more. Um, we now, and this is for me my personal highlight, the configuration storage transformation API. Um, it's relatively simple. It's a like, glorified alter hook. Uh, <coughs> it's a event um, driven, so it's the Symphony event. Uh, they're dispatched both when you export the configuration, so when, when this other storage that I just mentioned is accessed, or when you import the configuration. Um, if, if, you're if you're the Drush maintainer or the Drupal console maintainer or the module maintainer that does the import with the like, non-standard ways, then there is a small thing that you need to do. But otherwise, as a user of this API, uh, it's an event that you can subscribe to, um, and it contains a configuration storage, the, the same uh, type as, as all of the other configuration storages are. And you just massage it the way you want. You, 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 you can add configuration to it, you can remove from it, you can change the configuration that's in it. The event doesn't mean that the, the interaction happens, like this event is also dispatched when you want to see the diff, like what is going to be in important. But whatever you, you happen to do to this uh, configuration storage is then what is actually imported or what is actually exported. Um, <coughs> so far, everything clear, right? Um, of course, we cannot just add a new API to core uh, without using it in core, and this was actually the the biggest hurdle, so to say, to, to get this in, into core, to, to make core work this way. Uh, so we added a functionality that used to be part of the Drush command, the skip modules, then it became a, a contrib module, and now it's in core. You don't need to uh, install any module for this. This works 8.8 out of the box. Nice. Uh, all you need to do is you add in your settings.php the settings with the key config exclude modules and an array of module names that you want to exclude. And um, provided your system for importing and exporting uses this new API, so for example the Rush 10 or the UI, um, when you export the configuration these modules will never be part of it. So the, if, if you have the well installed on your, on your machine and you have this setting, then the export <coughs> will be as if you had uninstalled the well before exporting it. It will remove all the configuration that depends on the well, and it will remove the well from the uh, core extensions from, from the enabled modules. Um, and on the other way, uh, if you import configuration that doesn't have the well as part of the, the package that you import, the, the zip or the, the file system, but you have it the well enabled on your site, it will not uninstall the well. It will keep the well there, and it will just keep it the way it is. It will not change any of the configuration. Um, so your, your development environment is not affected by importing the configuration that doesn't have the well installed. Um, if you didn't have, for example, file stage proxy installed, it will not install it for you. Um, and if you didn't have it installed, it will also not remove it because there is nothing to remove. 
And um, this system is made for development modules or modules that you want to be completely excluded from the configuration synchronization. This does not work at all with user, system, language, probably node, uh, all, the all the modules that have a heavy influence on configuration entities. Um, it, it will work when you export it. It will remove system and user and all of like language from your export. But the import will not work anymore. The import will just say, like, sorry, can't uninstall system, and it will not allow you to import. Which makes sense. It's, that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the reason why we use the import. It, it gives you some safety. But uh, using this system means also that one of, you, you take off one of the safety belts. It's this, the configuration management from, from the Drupal 8.0 has a lot of safety belt. It has a lot of <coughs> like built-in um, ways of, of making sure the configuration synchronization is safe and, and it doesn't just blow away your content and it doesn't do all of this. Uh, using this allows you to have development modules but at the cost of a little bit less safety. It's, it's still relatively safe, but if you abuse it, it's your own fault. You have been warned. <laughs> um, I mean, people will get creative and try to use this for many ways for which it's not intended, but also then you, I mean, it's PHP and it's your own Drupal site. You, you can do, do it whatever you want. I'm just not recommending it. Um, at, at this stage, uh, a huge thank you for, for all the people who were involved so far and all the people who are going to be involved uh, because um, the CMI2 is mostly volunteer driven. I, every once in a while I, I have a couple of minutes to spare to, to kick other people, uh, to like push them a little bit or what, what was it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he knows. <laughs> Sure. He, he's, he was on my list to, uh, of, of people to, to <laughs> nudge, like, hey, there is a patch that someone wrote and maybe you should look at. Because um, most, and, and this is probably like a, a, a reason for, for which the, most of like the contrib solutions, they, they kind of work and you don't actually need this to be in core and so you, you can just take the country module. So it's, it's very difficult to motivate, like why, why, why should I spend so much time on, on doing this when it actually works for, for my site? It's like I don't have a problem. It's like, <laughs> you know, why, why fix something that's not broken, right? Um, so it's, it's really, a, a, like thank you very much to all the people who, who are involved to like test issues, test patches, uh, even, even people who write new issues and, and like explain what what is not working, um, and, and this way we, we, we can move forward. Uh, there's still a couple of areas that, that need help. Um, so I said before, one of the achievements from 8.6 was to install from configuration, um, except it doesn't work with the standard profile, <laughs> which is a bit ironic. Um, so the, the reason for this was we, we needed to exclude as much complexity as we can to get it done. It was better to have install from config work for minimal and your custom profiles than to try to solve all the problems at the same time and not have it. Um, so we excluded profiles with the hook install implementation because um, when you install a module, there's two ways in which you can install a module. The one is you go to your site, you install the module. And the other one is you had your site with the module installed, you ex export the configuration and you go to your other site where the module is not yet installed and you import the configuration. And the module will be installed so that the import process installs the module. And these are different, different ways, different processes. And the, the, the order in which the hooks are called is different. So um, when you install a module from 
like the UI, then your configuration that comes with your module is installed, and then the hook install is called. When a module is installed as part of a configured uh, synchronization, then all the modules that will be installed will be installed and have their hook installed um, called. And then all the configuration is imported, but not the one from the modules, but the one from the sync directory or the, the sync part. And um, this, this is, has always been this way for modules, and so you, you cannot rely on the configuration that you ship with your module in your module's hook install for, uh, method um, function. And, and that's okay, that's a limitation. Everybody got used to living with this. The problem is that with profiles, there is only one way to ever call the hook install of a profile. It only gets called once, the first time you install your Drupal instance. <coughs> Uh, but now, if we have installing from configuration, then the same happens. So installing from configuration is essentially install system and then config import. And the profiles then also get installed as a config import and then none of the configuration is actually there when you expect it to be there. And so it, it creates this problem that it cannot actually work. So we said, okay, well, we just don't do it for now and have config install for, other, for all the other profiles. And now is the time to actually fix this because this, in my opinion, is still a bit broken. Um, it's, it's clearly a feature that needs to be there. Um, but how it's going to be fixed is, is still an open question because there is many different avenues we could go down on, on how we could solve this. Can we say, okay, we added this other feature in 8.6.0. So now everybody had time to refactor their hook install method because anyway it didn't work. You couldn't use this feature. Like standard, for example, now works. Or do we say, okay, we, we special case the modules and we add lots of code to um, have the profiles hook install work differently than a normal module? and yeah, there's, there's, that, I, I don't know. It's up to you as well. You, their feedback is welcome. Ideas are welcome. Um, <laughs> patches are welcome. Reviews of patches are welcome. Um, standard profile is not working yet. Hmm? Standard profile is not working yet. No. Um, standard profile would work, but uh, currently there is a piece of code that says if a profile has a hook install, yeah. don't allow it because we don't know if it's safe to allow it. Um, the easiest is to just patch it and, and remove the hook install or rename the hook install and then you can install from standard by not calling the hook sta like standard install. There's a list of other modules. Um, there are links, so I will upload the presentation somewhere um, where you can then click on. I will also have this list for the contribution day. So some of these are harder, some of these are easier, but these are still issues that could make it uh, in 8.9, not in 8.8 .8 anymore, I think, because some of them are bug fixes and um, some of them are like the, the add constraints to all config entity types um, would, for example, allow the JSON API and the API first uh, part to, to use uh, the configuration entities. But some of them, like the, there is no indication on config forms if there are overwritten values, uh, need more input because uh, if you overwrite the configuration, then there could be ma many reasons for this. Maybe it could, is an API key that you don't want to show on the UI, but currently it's not very convenient to not know that your form is um, like you, you show on the form a value, but actually another one is used. And uh, for fixing this, one could, for example, uh, make forms more connected to the um, configuration schema, which is related to the constraints, for example. So it's a bit interconnected. But um, if you want to work on any of these, then I, I will be help. Uh, happy to, to point you in the in the direction and help you getting along. 
Um, the config environment, the, the module that helped us to get the other achievements done. Um, so we, we added uh, the API to this module, and then we added the use of the API that, to this module, and then we removed the API from the module and put it in core, and then we removed the use of the API and put it in core, and, and then now the, the, the module is empty again. Yep. Um, and so, but the idea of it is postponed and, and not canceled. So we, we still want to um, allow managing uh, environment-specific configuration, which, which was the outset, like the original goal that we agreed on was, was to make this happen. Um, we, we didn't. Uh, we, we had to compromise and make a, make, put in a much simpler version in, in core. Again, it's, easy, it's better to have something smaller done and than to dream of the, the big fancy thing that um, wasn't done. Um, so this, this is now Drupal 9 only. Um, and uh, I think in the meantime, we will focus on, on upgrading the Contrib eco ecosystem. We, we will not forget about this. And um, you can still also help working on this. It, it's not going to be wasted effort, hopefully. Most likely. <laughs> it's, it's always um, the, the amount of, of effort that goes into it. If, if it gets abandoned, then it gets abandoned. But uh, as long as someone is interested in, in, in this, and, and I think there's still a clear use case for managing um, environment-specific configuration, then there, there will be a, a motivation to, to have this available. Um, so best practices and, and how you can uh, get involved. So uh, for contrib solutions, uh, use the new API where it makes sense. Uh, help port all the, I, I forgot how many the, the other initiatives had like a nice um, slide with like the, con, um, with the, their modules ecosystem. Um, there, there is a lot of modules in, with config something. Some of them can be consolidated um, because the new API is a different approach than all the modules that depend on config filter, for example. Um, if, if you want to be prepared for, for this config environment module that I talked about that we're still going to work on for Drupal 9, then the best is to use config split, um, but with only one environment per module, uh, with only one split per environment. Um, currently, config split allows for as many as you want. Um, but when we get the uh, config environments into core, we, we will need to make it um, simpler and, and more with, with less edge cases. Because config split allows for many different workflows and many different edge cases. And uh, some of them, they work, and, and most of them work, but you can also corner yourself, um, especially with updating um, configuration. Example, um, if you have a, a split and you have configuration for a module that is only enabled in production, and then you update this module, and you have an update hook from this module, then this update hook only runs in production, and therefore the, the configuration that it might be changed from this update hook only run in production, and then you have nothing to import from, sort of, to still keep it safe. With config split, you can have, you can adjust your workflow to export the configuration first, like only the specific one, but it all depends on, on how you use it. And if we want to put it in core, it needs to be solid. Like, it, it needs to work for everybody the same way. So we, we need to cut down a bit the complexity. So you will not have multiple environments at the same time active, for example. That's one of the ways of, of keeping it simple. Um, for distributions, so like this third part of the CMI2, uh, there's three steps. Uh, come together, join the initiative, and find a consensus around the workflow. Because there's a lot of people who maintain fantastic distributions. Um, but 
every distribution handles configuration updates in their own way and in, in their separate way. And uh, if, if you start a new distribution, you, you can choose one of the approaches and choose your own adventure. Um, and it would be great if, if we could find like a, a common solution or, or like a, a common ground, a common denominator that then every distribution can specialize and, and benefit from. But there is like a, a, a common ground of how you do this. Because currently, while Drupal 8 supports distributions, you can obviously build distributions on Drupal 8. But the configuration management of a distribution in Drupal 8 is mm, somewhat lacking, uh, <laughs> to call it and be, be nice about it. And uh, important note here, the, this new API that we, we added is, for, is designed for configuration synchronization. So do not try to use this new API for distributions. But uh, there's a very good uh, alternative. The config distro, the, um, uh, it's, it's a module it named config distro because naming things is hard, and I didn't really know how to better name it. I, ideally, this would be something that core would support, but we need to have a consensus first. We need to first know that this is actually what core should support. And it, there's an asterisk because currently uh, there is the patch is not committed yet, but there's a patch that transforms completely how config distro used to work into working the same way as the new API does. So there is a new event that is dispatched when the configuration is updated. So um, the way it works is you import the configuration, but instead of importing it from the sync directory, from, from the configuration that you stage, it imports from itself, from the active <coughs> configuration. And then it applies like the, the event system, like you, you all, all of the event subscribers can change the, the configuration that you want to be active after you have updated your distribution. So it's, um, it's a way around uh, update hooks. Currently, probably the best solution um, is to use update hooks for your um, distribution. Like you change your configuration way uh, in your module and then you have an update hook that makes the new configuration be the same as the old. And you have to have a lot of logic around to make sure that the, the configuration is updated in a such a way that it still makes sense. Um, because the, pe the people that install the site based on your distribution might have changed it or might not have. And maybe you want to allow this change and maybe not. It's, yeah, we, we need to find a, good, a common workflow or some, some sort of consensus uh, around this. And finally, a word about multi-site. Uh, last time at the <coughs> developer days, um, um, like 90% of the questions were about multi-site. And um, my suggestion would be to treat a multi-site as you would a distribution. With, like a multi-site is a distribution where it just happens that the person who uses the distribution and the person who maintains the distribution <laughs> is the same team. Um, so shared code, but only shared some of the configuration. It's a bit, it can work, but with lots of caveats. The, the configuration split has been used uh, successfully by some, I, I was told. Um, but if, if you use the configuration synchronization process, which is meant for deploying the configuration of one site to, to another environment, you're not using the tool for what it is built for. <coughs> and, and it depends like really on, on if, if this is a good fit for your workflow. So if, do, do you have a staging environment for each of the sites in your multi-site uh, installation? Or how do you develop, the, do you have like a master instance? Or do you develop local features for each of them? Do you switch locally between which instance of the multi-site you have? All of these things. Also here, come together, we would love to have more input of people who use multi-site with configuration management. So um, yeah, join the uh, conversation. It's important that you uh, contribute as well.
to, to the ideas. And if you if your business model depends on it, uh, then you have a very good motivation to help out, I think. Uh, join us for the contribution opportunities. I will be there um, to, to help review patches and commit stuff to my contrib uh, things. Obviously, I cannot commit to other things. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also on, on core uh, issues that I can also not commit, but I can help with. And rate the session. Thank you very much. And, and uh, there's still a couple of minutes for questions. Um, there's too many of you for all of you to ask questions. So, but uh, yeah, go ahead. First hand. Uh, uh, for regarding distributions, is there an issue that's currently discussing the, how they'd like to approach it, or? Um, <coughs> Is there a, a good place to, to talk about that? Um, ah, it was on the first slide. Mm. Yeah, that one. Oh, okay. Other question? Yes. Do you know the client config care module? The? Do you know the client config care module? No. no. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, we have developed it for our uh, use cases to record the uh, configuration changes which <coughs> clients are doing on their websites um, to not override them. So we can ah, yeah. uh, export and import our configuration without overriding the client's configuration. Yes. Uh, we find it very helpful for production yeah. purposes. Exactly. So you would also, re like, what, what kind of system do you currently use? To uh, to use this module, like what? How do you hook into the workflow? Well, it, it works automatically. It records the configuration changes of. The yes, function. when you and you edit, you it records. But how how do you make sure that the re the recorded configuration doesn't get reverted? It uh, creates uh, entities, so it, it shows up which changes have been made by which user, and uh, then as an administrator. You can uh, check that this logs, and um, when you would like to override the configuration changes from the client, then you can delete the logs. You get me? No, but I think we need to discuss this later. <laughs> Sounds very interesting. Yeah, there's a detailed yeah. uh, description on the module. Uh, page. I, I will check it out. Other question, yes. Which content modules are abandoned now after maybe Which content modules are? Abandoned, uh, not needed anymore. Uh, abandoned. So, um, I don't know exactly. Um, the config exclude module um, is completely replaced. You it, you can already start using it on 8.7. It was it not... Uh, um, by, by the Drupal.org statistics, a widely used module, but you can use it on 8.7 already or 8.6, and then when you update to 8.8, .8, it, will, it will be a drop-in replacement. It, that's for sure. Then the other one, um, the config filter, uh, there is already a patch, but uh, we need to update the test for it, for config filter to make a 2.x, that if you use modules that depend on config filter, they will use the new API. So the config filter 2.x will be the, the bridge between the config filter 1.x and the new core API. Um, one more question, one more minute, yes? You had mentioned not disabling in the, the module exclude, not disabling the system, the user, the field uh, modules. What about UI modules for those modules? For example, field UI or web form UI? Uh, yeah, so all the modules that don't have like a huge impact on the configuration. So if you have modules that provide third-party settings, for example, they're dangerous. Uh, but modules that, that are just the UIs, like Views UI, perfectly safe. You, views UI doesn't have any like special configuration that affects all the configuration. Like Devel has also configuration, but only its own. It doesn't go and change lots of configuration. Um, I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much for joining and uh, have a nice evening.